time. Um, can folks see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, great turnout. Uh, always great to uh, to see everyone here. Um, we'll go uh, right into the SCAL API improvements. Uh, Felix, I will I will let you take it from there. Sure. Um, so. Uh, from what I got from the feedback uh, that was provided to me so far regarding SCAL, uh, the biggest missing things seem to be uh, handling of events for notifying uh, of, of changes in the data model, uh, and the other part was adding and removing objects. So on an API level, I implemented both. Um, I decided to keep the event handling pretty simple. It only covers modifications that are done through SCAL itself. So I think it should be in line with what's necessary for the initial round of conversion, but it doesn't try to do much fan fancy things with regards to integrating with the rest of the system and trying to detect other changes. Uh, so I'm keeping it simple here, which I think should be suitable for the first milestone. Um, Regarding adding and removing objects, um, I, I think the API is pretty much done. It's very simple, and I implemented a test case for it in the JSON plugin, but there's still some uh, issues there. Uh, the JSON plugin still caches some things that, uh, that it shouldn't cache, so sometimes it takes, a, it takes a restart to be able to see the changes. But since the JSON plugin is not really covered as part of the first milestone anyway and just serves as an example of where we headed, I decided to not really uh, finish and polish this now. I think uh, it demonstrates the API clearly enough uh, so that other porting work can start. And so with uh, these things implemented, from my perspective, uh, the, the SCAL API itself is, is pretty much complete for the first milestone. All right. Well, thank you, Felix. Uh, really, really glad to hear that uh, that made progress. Have, has anyone else have any feedback or thoughts on? Um, have they been able to look at it? I know it only came out in the last day or so. So uh, it's only that uh, uh, Lauter will um, will try to, to to have a look at, at this API and to provide his feedbacks. Uh, but as he was absent uh, during several weeks, uh, it's not that easy for him to, mm -hmm. to do everything uh, now. But we'll try to do it. All right, very understandable there. Uh, just a um, some just a reminder to folks is that our contract with Felix is uh, ends at the end of the month. So if there are any tweaks that you really need to get in. Um, please do that very soon because we don't have much time. Um, Eric, one comment from the yep. side. Uh, it will be important for the uh, prosecution of the work that the guys from Sartura will have a look deeply into that code. I think, unfortunately, there is no one on the line today, mm -hmm. but we can ask them offline to start looking at it and understanding how to uh, proceed with their integration, um, specifically with uh, our ADB code, but in general in the OpenWRT ecosystem of, um, of these new SCAR updates. Mm -hmm. Oh, here is Luca. Luca just got in, yeah. Yeah, hi. Hey there, Luca. Hi, Luca. Hi, Luca. Uh, yes, Matteo was was just uh, t mentioning mentioning you was wondering if uh, Satura had any had a chance to look at the um, the scale API changes uh, no I saw your uh, mail Matteo today but actually I'm on vacation <laughs> not doing uh, <laughs> work stuff but other work stuff so uh, we will, I will get back to you on that uh, didn't take a look all right Awesome. Well, I mean, if anyone else has any um, feedback or thoughts, I mean, please please share them or um, you know put it in the base camp for the TR069 stuff or the uh, or I you know maybe an issue in the in the repo. So 
Um, any other questions or comments for Felix? Because I know he has a, he has a conflict. He has to go as, uh, as, once his part is done. So. All right. Oh, actually, Felix, one one thing I wanted to wanted to bring up with you, and I, I actually forgot to put this on the uh, agenda, was the idea of the um, of a purple feed. Um, I, I don't know. Did have you have you uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, which packages would you like to uh, have as part of this feed? Uh, the initial would be the um, the work that Sartura had done with uh, with um, uh, Inteno on the web sockets, uh, uh, Ubus or Ubus over web sockets, um, and we would uh, see what other projects make sense for it. Um, I'm not sure if scale is the right right thing there because it is a l pretty general. Um, but yeah, at the moment, scale has its own feed, and I'm planning on uh, once things progress further there and it starts. Uh, becoming useful in practice, uh, I intend to commit it to core, uh, to the core lead repository. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good place for that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, do, do you have any thoughts in general on the concept or of a, of well, a, I think, um, I, I think it's, it's fine though. I usually, um, it depends. I, I think it depends on how these, these packages are maintained. Mm -hmm. um, I guess if it's something um, that, where there's going to be more integration with other packages from OpenWRT and Lead, it might be useful to put it there. But if it's something where um, the, the maintainers of the packages prefer to have that as a purple feed, then I think that's, that's fine with me as well. I think it should be up to the maintainers of the actual packages uh, where they want to keep that. Makes sense. Okay. I was th I was thinking so. <clears throat> uh, on the last meeting, this topic was brought up, and uh, I was thinking that Scal would be one of the packages that would go into Purple Feed since uh, it was done under Purple Umbrella or whatever. But it's completely fine that uh, Scal also goes into the core. But then I'm also thinking if we should put OWSD also into the core. And then try to see if we can also add, uh, uh, enable Lucy to, to work over OWSD. So, um, yeah, we would have to look into um, the OWSD separately because um, I, I think it, it depends on the WebSocket, right? Yes. And that's part of packages right now, right? Yes. Yeah, so we would have to look into that as well. And I think, um, yeah, we'll have to bring this up with the, with the community, I guess. Um, I'm fine with it either way, I guess. Um, yeah, we'll just discuss this in a wider circle, I guess. I completely agree. And that's one of the reasons, uh, Eric, I told you to bring this up. Uh, with with others, so I, I would be happy if we can enable Purple to to contribute more uh, to community via its partners and by itself. So I think in general it's a good idea. Yeah. Yep. And with with that thought, I think it might also make sense to just not do the Purple feed thing because if if all the packages that are coming out of purple and purple members are contributed directly, I think that goes a step further uh, towards purple being seen as a direct contributor as opposed to something just doing their own thing. I think it would be good that we, they have, um, you know, like a staging directory, uh, like a staging step of the carriers because, for mm -hmm. example, um, uh, ADB, uh, made uh, initial efforts uh, months ago and it's still only uh, accessible to, to few of us mainly on this call. Um, so, so purple bridge, uh, bridging the gap 
initially uh, should should be helpful. I think. I I also kind of have that that thought that that um, it might be a good kind of middle step where there are things that we're not sure if it makes sense to make it broader broader you know a lot of participation in a broader sense but it would be nice to have have it open and available but at the same time there are going to be things like you mentioned with SCAL or you know WSD or any of those that that may make more sense to be like okay we're those should be either in core or packages or something along those lines. So, um. I think treating it as a staging ground and a stepping stone towards uh, full integration makes perfect sense. Okay, great. Well, glad to, that's that's awesome. Um, yeah, we'll we'll continue the discussion then. But thank you for the feedback, Felix. I think that's that's very helpful. Yeah, usually if. Felix, please correct me if I'm wrong, but usually we have um, a rule. I don't know if it's written or not, but uh, if somebody had a feed, they would first have to uh, prove they are a worthy maintainer, so they won't bring things along the way. And once, yeah. I don't know, it was obvious that they are good at what they do, then this feed would um, be accepted. So we have that situation. Yeah, I think we have a um, situation with the routing feed. Mm. Uh, sorry. And yeah, the, the routing feed, I think it's still something where I believe it, it should be it should be dissolved in the packages feed because in a lot of places the separation simply <clears throat> doesn't make much sense. So can we conclude some concrete steps? Will there be a purple feed as a staging ground for starters, or or shouldn't we go in that direction? I would support that. I mean, what what do other people think? And, and you know, Felix and Luca are both supportive of it. But I want do other people think this is a good idea? Next time, go with, are there any objections? Yes. Are there any objections to this idea? We'll go with that. No objections, Eric. Okay. Luca, I think it's a great contribute. I believe that this is the best way also to make a first link with the carrier. Okay. I think this is a good idea. Okay. Then we will, we will move forward uh, with a purple feed. Um, that is, we're considering kind of a staging and... Uh, and as to, over time, some of those packages may move to other places, but for now, they will be in, uh, in, if they are kind of in that middle area, then we'll put them in purple feed from purple members. Okay, so yeah. you will open a GitHub uh, Git, and then you can give access to... Yep, will do, Luca. Will do. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I, I think whatever, whatever draws more attention and energy is is helpful so if this is a way to you know energize and and draw more attention and get more community and and so forth into it then that should be helpful awesome uh, I just want, wanted to make the point that I, I think um, once a package um, is is ready to get a wider review from the wider community it probably makes sense at that point in time to Propose it uh, for integration in either core leader open and open WRT or the packages feed. Um, for the staging tree, I think um, it's more of a testing ground for packages where um, the, the kind of adoption or who would be interested in it or something isn't really all that clear yet. Uh, because I I think. If you if you put it in a purple specific if you put something in a purple specific feed, some people might be looking, but I think it won't get the same uh, amount of feedback as proposing something for for uh, in in one of the existing trees. I, I no, I agree with you definitely. I think that that's I think we we can you know get the exact wording and how we want to do it, but I think we're kind of on the same page that. This is, you know, probably not the f 
final place that all these packages will be. They may move at some point, but for now, this is a good place for them to kind of grow a little, uh, and get a little experimentation. Eric and Eric and Felix, mm -hmm. just, just for my understanding, and please uh, do not take this in, in a bad way, but. Uh, we are talking here about two different streams. So one through the purple fifth. Uh, I think this for a carrier itself, uh, it provides uh, more secureness. And I think it's uh, a first important step. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you guys are also talking about the broader community. And who is this community? Uh, I'm talking about again, the community. Don't take me wrong. Yeah, I'm talking about the community of OpenWRT and lead developers. And use okay, so, okay. So your pr proposal on this step would be for uh, after uh, several integration steps or movements under the purple feed to have a broader discussion to see if this could be integrated somehow in the wider community? Right. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. And how usually does it work? So who are the people that need to accept it or not? Well, with the, with the packages feed, uh, uh, we're not very strict about um, what gets accepted or not. It just has to be something where um, is whoever proposes the package also intends to maintain it afterwards. Um, and there's no, uh, no strict acceptance criteria there. Uh, it's um, for the core, of course, it's uh, the the core developer of the respective project that's making the decision, and uh, we're usually more reluctant uh, of accepting packages uh, in in core uh, if it if there's no clear good reason for doing so. Um, the reason why I'm bringing it up, uh, having this distinction between purple feed and and the packages feed, is um, if you want. I, I think if you want people to look at the wider implication of having a package available for the OpenWRT and Lead ecosystem, um, then I, I think that's the point where the package should really go into that repository and not live in the purple feed uh, any longer where it's more, its visibility is probably more limited to uh, the purple side and the carrier side and probably will get less feedback from the outside. I'm I'm thinking more in the lines of that we at some point put purple feed as a default feed in the projects. We I think we can uh, we can certainly consider that, but I um, I think in terms of development, there's still a clear distinction in terms of who is going to look at these things. Um, the the packages feed certainly has a bigger community to it, and I think. Just adding more places that all the developers of the project should look into uh, may not be a step in the right direction. Mm, I have, um, how to say, um, I don't share that opinion because there has not been a one situation where you have a contributor who still has a um, um, how to say uh, place uh, still can learn more. Okay, so he is starting, and then he contributes a package, and then uh, by default uh, he is the one who basically says how package will look, or he makes a decision, and then um, it's can be very very complicated to convince a random person on the internet to accept something because it helps you or, or your project. And having a carrier and uh, business-oriented packages in a feed where businesses will take care of these packages in a um, professional manner uh, is also very valuable as well as having a community as a random people on the internet take a look at them as well. Well, I wouldn't necessarily call it random people on the internet. I mean, the the community be, behind, let's say, for instance, the OpenWRT and the lead feed, um, 
they've been taking quite a different approach to making uh, to developing packages uh, than the industry itself and it's uh, the the differences in approaches they have pros and cons and I think contrasting it as industry here and random guys on the internet uh, on the other side that's not really a good analogy to this I think there are many issues where the industry might see things one way and the community might see things another way um, but we still even in the packages feed have a way of giving out maintainer access uh, to to people for the sake of maintaining their own packages so it's not like uh, they'd be losing full control or they'd be subjecting themselves to the will of random people on the internet but in in some ways um, some of these packages the, the people that make them may have some opinions on what should be done there um, but I think you often especially uh, people from the industry tend to focus more on their own needs than uh, the needs of, of the ecosystem that they're interacting with so I think bridging that uh, or, or um, getting things more integrated in the standard feeds that we have will probably uh, go a bit of a way towards bridging that gap as well. But we now see the tendency to change from the industry members as we can see on the meeting because a few years ago there is some strange echo. Uh, so a few years ago uh, we didn't have a meeting with a lot of companies who want to contribute to the projects. At least not that I was aware of. Um, I completely agree with you that uh, that we're making steps in the right direction here. Um, but let me just say that regardless of what opinions we have on this call, uh, something like this is still worth discussing in a wider circle beyond this meeting. Um, so absolutely, we'll see where we end up. Completely agree, and that brings me back to initial proposal to Eric, which I made, and that's uh, to bring this topic up on the mailing list. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, do we want to move forward with creating the feed and also bring it up on the mailing list, or do we want to go to the mailing list first and then? Decide on what we want to, how we want to move forward. I would propose that uh, you open a GitHub. We put uh, one package in this uh, feed, whichever package mm -hmm. you choose. Yep. And once you do that, uh, and it's tested on the latest uh, versions mm -hmm. of uh, OpenWP and Lead, uh, you send out an uh, email saying, "Hey, here is a feed. These are the plans and." Uh, I don't know. We yet have to decide uh, how to move forward, but in case you want to use this package and other packages we are using in, uh, in the purple, uh, yeah, feel free to check it out and here are instructions how to do so. And that's it. Okay. Makes sense, Felix? Seem reasonable? Yeah. Okay. I think that's reasonable. Um, I, and in terms of what packages we put in there, um, I think it uh, just ask people if they want their packages in a purple feed, if they want their own thing or if they want to contribute to packages. Just mm -hmm. uh, leave it up to the actual package maintainers, whatever option they want to choose. Okay. All right. Well, those are our next steps then. I will I will create that feed and then work on that email and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about it and then go from there. All right. Sounds good. Sounds great. Uh, do we have anything else that we need Felix for before he, before he heads out? All right. Uh, well, thanks, Felix. I really appreciate you being able to make it, and thanks for all the great work. And if uh, folks have some feedback on the API, we w I'm sure they will let you know. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Felix. Goodbye. All right. Um, the uh, carrier interest group update. Uh, the low-level um, WLAN API. Uh, I uh, sent over some some uh, initial draft of the. Um, kind of the our recommendation document um, based mostly on what uh, Wojtek or not Wojtek um, Walter um, proposed. Uh, I sent it over to Walter, uh, Matteo, and Hauke um, for their kind of uh, technical 
feedback. I'm sure there are other people, but that's where I started with. Um, Mateo, have you had a chance to evaluate that? Does it make sense? Have I done anything that doesn't make any sense in there? We had the chance to give a quick look at it, mm -hmm. and it, 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 it mostly uh, basically uh, rephrase and recap what uh, Walter yep. discussed on this camp, and we we don't have any specific uh, issues nor hint on that. So it seems quite describing uh, uh, describing quite well what is needed, what will be the uh, APIs need, and mm -hmm. uh, so as a starting point, to be shared with the cardio interest group members. Mm -hmm. from, from our point of view, it's it's fine. Okay. Like so. All right. Sounds good. Once uh, once Walter can catch up, well, I'll get his feedback, and, and we'll we'll take that from there. I think we'll send it to the uh, the um, chip makers. And uh, their uh, and get their feedback just to make sure that we haven't we're all on the same page on what we're agreeing on. Um, and uh, by the way, regarding the uh, WLAN API, we may uh, have some some participation from uh, the uh, Wi-Fi group of Imagination Technologies. I'm going to be talking with them next week, so that could be uh, interesting group to also bring into that. Uh, the software stack independent API, um, we uh, talked Eric, a Yep. Eric, sorry. Before we continue, just a quick question. Uh, yep. Did we receive information from the ship's defenders that this would be something that they would be willing to work together? or? Yes. Yes, they uh, they agreed at the, um, the meeting, um, uh, the in-person meeting that we had in Santa Clara, and then um, Broadcom agreed uh, in the last carrier interest group meeting that they could move forward um, without a particular timeline, but as a goal that they would um, move to the the API. But now that we actually have it in like a recommendation document, I want to you know get a one last, I haven't said anything wrong here that we, we're not, this is how we all understand it kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, I just wanted to understand exactly how they are willing to drive it, right? If it's something that they are really putting some resource on it and some effort on it, or this is something that in one year from now we'll continue to discuss that uh, in the past they said they would work together. No, I, I think that I think that they've they've pretty much agreed that they're go this is where this is the direction they're going, and they're either either have implemented this or will implement this. Okay. Thanks for the clarification, Eric. Yep, no problem. Um, the software stack independent API. Um, th there are still some Basecamp feeds or uh, questions out there. I would encourage people to give some more feedback on what stacks should be considered. Uh, what are your particular use cases? What are the things that you need to have, have uh, implemented? I also uh, posted some information uh, from that I received from a couple members of the carrier interest group on um, on the topics of um, uh, the the HAL layer that that is in RDK, since that is of note. Um, I, I don't know if that could be a potential um, API that or HAL that we would implement would would want implemented or agree upon. That's really up in the air as to what folks think. Um, so I would encourage people to evaluate that and give their feedback. If they see anything that's missing, anything that, that they feel needs to be added, please uh, mention it. Um, on both these topics, I know that Voitech is going to be visiting the RDK Summit in um, at the end of the month. Do you have any, want to say a few words on that, Voitech? Yeah, so um, there is a, the annual uh, meeting uh, I, uh, in the past few weeks. I, I had a face-to-face a, a -face talk with the RDK management guys. So uh, in Denver, uh, I think I will be able to meet the right people to, to talk uh, with about this, uh, this 
uh, this uh, issue because it was not quite clear for the RDK management guys how to deal with that. Uh, so my hope is that after the Denver meeting it will be much clearer and we will know with whom to, to speak and um, what can be done. I still hope that um, together we can do something much better than separate. All right. Uh, any any uh, questions for Voitech or feedback on this topic? All right. Uh, I just I just want to reiterate to folks that you know if you have any. Any preferences or feedback on, on the software stack independent API, the what you think should be in there? Do you have any um, you know standards or anything like that that you could share? Um, I would encourage people to do so. It would make the, it would uh, speed the process up. So um, open WRT summit, the update there is that the you know the committee met last week and we are encouraging members of the committee to Volunteer for particular tasks. Um, if you if you said that you would do so, please uh, please respond to that email. We're going to meet again uh, next Wednesday uh, to to figure out who what hasn't been volunteered for, and then um, I guess we'll have to assign things or figure it out how how to cover the other ones. Uh, the data models in OpenWRT that is covered by the Software Stack Independent API, so that was a mistake there. Um, Board farm updates. Uh, do we have any board farm updates from anyone? Not today, from Eric. Never heard that. Have you made any uh, progress on on submitting tests or thought about that? Yeah. So the first one we were going to do um, is just had a bit of a, a trouble getting through our own process, really. But it's I think it's almost there. I did talk to the engineer about streaming it and there should be no issues, so hopefully soon. Awesome. That's great to hear. Um, I, I don't know if uh, Altran and uh, and uh, folks at Vodafone, if, if you made any progress or um, on the uh, board farm topic? Uh, not uh, from our side. I mean, we have, we have uh, set up the, the scenario we we configure a different uh, device, uh, but we haven't added any test cases yet. Okay, uh, sounds good. We would certainly encourage you to uh, to get involved and participate, and we can see how how we can make the project uh, work better for everyone. All right. Any other questions or comments on Board Farm? Um. Funding uh, OpenWRT projects, that is uh, on hold until we finish the current projects. Um, so we will probably evaluate that again at the uh, beginning of March once uh, Felix's project is finished. Uh, regulatory update, um, not a ton. However, I uh, just found out that I will be speaking personally at uh, Libre Planet at the end of March on the topic of my experiences working with the FCC on, on the topic of regulation um, and Wi-Fi regulation, so I um, just wanted to uh, mention that. Um, but outside of that, there has not been much from the FCC side as they are still trying to figure out what is going on um, for policy in this area and in general at the FCC as their administration is still very new. Um, I haven't heard anything on the on the EU side either, but um, if I do, I will I will pass it along. Uh, any other comments or questions? That's all I have in the agenda right now. Hey Eric, this is Cesare. Yep. I probably just wanted to share a quick update on other things that are happening uh, around Purple and Please do. In the community. So uh, one is uh, um, just a reminder. We are constantly looking for thought leadership content for people who want to help us write a little note, blog posts, uh, interviews, and videos, and so forth. So someone at Ultran, Frederick, actually took the time, So and his article has been published now on some testing 
software magazine, something I don't remember. So uh, let us know. We work with the PR agency. Uh, what you need to do in the end is just to spend 30 minutes at the phone and then review their writing. So everyone is welcome. We really would like this to become more and more a purple community uh, um, outlet rather than the usual uh, suspect names. So that's one. The way you can make this happen, uh, either uh, send an email to Eric or me, Cesare, or attend the Friday marketing calls where we go into all the details of these various marketing opportunities. So that's one. In that contest, I also wanted to remind everyone that we will be at the uh, Embedded World in March. Uh, there are two presentations. There is a dinner. There will be drinks. So uh, just, again, let us know. We are collecting all the information of the names and people who are at the show, and we will figure out a way to get together there as well. Uh, the other big thing happening on the marketing side is uh, 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 the event that we are planning at Berkeley, at Berkeley University. It's an event, joint event with uh, uh, IOTSF, IoT Security Foundation, which is mainly a European organization, although some of the members are common. And uh, um, one of their uh, student clubs, which is the High Tech Student Club at the Business School. And again, so this is an event one day in Berkeley. Is the week before the IoT World event in Santa Clara, and Purple might be able to cover some of the um, travel costs uh, for some of the people who might be interested in speaking or presenting something at this event. Final thing, which I think it's very very promising for many people in this call. Uh, as you probably know, I've been one of the founding members at the Cloud Security Alliance on the Mobile Working Group and IoT Group. So the good news is that now I'm taking the uh, co-chair position also in the group that I founded a long time ago. And so there will be a space for people who are more experienced on the hardware side of security, and in particular home gateways and, and uh, um, IoT hubs, to participate to the next guidance work that is part of the Cloud Security Alliance um, guidance. And just to give you a sense, the Cloud Security Alliance, check the website, as something like 80,000 members around the world and 400 corporate members, including both providers and users, governments, whatever, and it's a global organization. It's a non-profit, so there's no money to be made and there's nothing to sell there as well. I think it's a great opportunity to be involved, uh, escape a bit from, from our uh, core competency around hardware and embedded and have more of interaction with the other side of the equation, which is uh, the, the cloud services on the other side. So this, this is a call for volunteers. Again, contact me, and we are starting off this part of the overall work. So there's plenty of work to do, but also opportunities to get visibility in a much broader context than open WRT or, or, or Purple to that extent. That would be all on, on my end. Uh, thank you, uh, Eric, for giving me these five minutes. No, thank you. No, I think it's it's great stuff. So if you have any feedback on any of those, uh, please do let me know. Let Cesare know, um, or, and we will we will go from there. So uh, yes, definitely. Anything else that anyone wants to bring up? All right. Well, hearing none, we will uh, we will cut the meeting uh, about fifteen minutes short. So enjoy your fifteen minutes, everyone, and uh, see you again next week. Bye, and thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.